everyone. It's so good to see everyone today. Uh, we are going to start our, our meeting today reading a message by the Spirit Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier called In Order to Free Ourselves. Laziness maintains our mind unoccupied and our hands idle. An unoccupied mind and idle hands always find untidiness. Untidiness results in time without discipline. Time without discipline leads to lack of vigilance. This lack of vigilance then leads us to useless conversation. Useless conversation only makes the darkness of spiritual blindness even denser. Spiritual blindness promotes imbalance. Imbalance attracts pride. Pride feeds our vanity. Vanity aggravates laziness worse. As it is easy to perceive, laziness is liable to unleash all that is bad, just as darkness can induce us to all kinds of error. Therefore, we can come to understand that obsession, madness, pessimism, the delinquency, or idleness can appear due to an authentic fertilization by idleness which intoxicates the mind and ruins lives. Thus, we should recognize that the first step towards liberation from inertia will always be to work. So let us all feel the presence of God in us and in everyone around us. Dear Mother, Father God, what a gift to exist and to be here in a new beginning. You are so provident that you've given us the power of renewal. May we learn to renew our feelings in the way we feel about everything and everyone, including ourselves. At this moment, we don't want to think about ourselves, for we are too privileged we have been blessed in a number of ways. And yet, though everyone is blessed, we feel for those who at this moment are not feeling well. Those who are in the hospitals or nursing homes, prisons, shelters, refugee camps, or in the streets of the world. May they hear your loving whisper, kindly inviting them to a new beginning, to the cleansing of their hearts. As we experience a new day, a new year, We visualize healing baskets being delivered to everyone who is in need of the energy medicine for the mind and the bodies. We feel the presence of the spirit doctors, the nurses and the therapists who embrace each one of us with healing remedies, balancing minds and bodies. May this therapeutic session be liberating as we are willing to co-create with you a session of kindness, joy, and much love. With your guidance, feeling your protection, we thank you for granting us the permission to this moment of service 
together in Soviet. All right, our children and teens have a special session. Yay, enjoy with Miss Paloma, Miss Daisy. It's going to be fun, right? Interesting enough, we begin a new year amongst friends that can't be better. Friends in the good, huh? because there are all types of friends, but we are friends in the good. We're not friends to visit each other at home and have tea together. We're friends to do the good. There is a huge difference, huge difference. And I remember in the past century, can you believe me? We met a century, the previous century. It wasn't the 21st yet. Oh, yeah, never can you believe? And we're not that old. <laughs> 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 we can say that our friendship began in the 20th century, a century ago. No, not a century ago, just the previous century. But that's where it all began in Baltimore, Maryland. And what a a blessing for us to receive here our friend Leo. He was born on the day that one of my brothers was born. So I say, you know, we're brothers. And we've been ever since. Spiritism brought us together. Leo was super young. Not a baby like Lucy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we were young. And he came, he was the first spiritist in his family. And as young as he was, he came all by himself to the group, the spiritist group that we were forming in Baltimore. Never left. Actually, he left once to Florida and realized, you know, you know, his mission was elsewhere in Baltimore. And he's been there ever since. He embraced the Spiritist teachings, not only for himself, but he became a true advocate for Spiritism, not only in words, but in true actions, helping many people in the area and also around the US, spreading it throughout his family, his beautiful children who are now teens, can't believe it. And he has been bringing his joy, his hope, his wonderful, friendly approach. And today he's coming here and it's a blessing to have here, him here with us today to share a message that is so inviting for a new beginning. Some people say that a new year is just a thing that people created just to see the big apple falling. No, that's not true. It's a physical phenomenon. We completed a, right, a turn around the sun and now it's a new beginning. It's a new cycle we need to explore and learn the new. For us spiritists, we know that the sun, so shiny and bright today, is a place where pure spirits gather together. They don't live there because pure spirits are not stuck in a location. They're always moving around, but they are meeting and the good spirits say in a footnote that is in the spirits book by Kardec that the rays of light that come from the sun, they are very living because they are the byproduct of the thoughts of these pure spirits. Which means when we learn to think in love, with love, we emanate light. Light that gives life, that gives warmth. So 
it's an honor for us to be circling around this sun of love and light in gratitude. There's so much for us to do this year, but would like Leo to come and delight us. Now he's Master Leo. I already got your master's degree, right, Master yes. Leo? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we are all yours, Leo. Yeah, we are. Let me just make sure I share the screen, okay? I'm in trouble. We're on. Oh, we are. Always. Right? Yeah. Okay, let me just. Good morning, everyone. Let's say it again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. The sun is shining. I know this is a cold picture, look, but we'll, we'll make sense out of it. And Happy New Year to everyone. It's good to be here. It's good to see some new faces, some old faces in a good way, not old. <laughs> known faces. Let's say known faces, right? So um, let me correct myself before I start getting in trouble. But it's it's certainly um, a, a good start of the year um, to be here with you know all of you doing this as well, sharing something that I need as well. And when 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 I talk to other spiritist centers, when we are invited to talk, number one is like me, really, you know, we feel that we're not in the truly in the position to say or to share much because we're also learning, right? But Vanessa asked um, to you know, talk about this message that we're going to see or, um, today from Emmanuel um, that, again, is service to me. So don't feel that I have the power, the knowledge, the degrees or whatever to say something that is perhaps in, I'm in need of it as well. So we're in the same boat, in the same position here. It's good to also share with you that, um, as Vanessa was sharing about the sun, that we're going to talk about towards the end too. Um, but for us to vibrate in this idea that we have friends, right? I mean, and she said, we have friends that, you know, we connect at work, we connect it, you know, and our, our family members, our family, our friends in terms of, you know, the, the ideals that we share together. And sometimes it's not related to spirituality. Sometimes it's not related to religiosity, right? Uh, or whatever we call, name we want to call. But friends that really puts us in, in the right place. As we were, as I was talking to Vanessa, Vanessa, hey, Leo, what do you know, we're going to have a meeting on the first. I'm like, the first? <laughs> really, the first? <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, you know, let's not say no, um, because we may be, I think Carlos is trying to catch you, call your attention there. Um, we, it's, oh, the camera, oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, let me get We're back just, here. No, yeah, get back here just so we can know. You're probably seeing my clavicle bone there <laughs> <laughs> okay now we're good right uh, yeah well is that good it is thank good you. right thank you and as we we're saying we're we don't we don't want to say no because it's not that we're afraid that we're not going to be called back again but it's <laughs> connecting with our mentors, right? Wait a minute, you know, we're giving you this opportunity, so let's not run from it, right? So like, okay, all right. So in a way, she also saved me from going to partying last night because we have to prepare for this. I joke, people, we don't party, you know, we're <laughs> pretty boring, you know, we go to bed early and whatnot. But nonetheless, one thing that I wanted to say, it made me reflect of one thing, is where was I the first of 2022? And I want to pose you the same question. Where were you the first of 2022? And some of you will maybe be thinking, well, I forgot what I ate last night. It's yeah, true, right? <laughs> but we can let this the idea digest, right? And I want to really um, invite everyone, to say the least, to, to really think, where was I the first of 2022? Because we're going to carry this idea for 2024, right? We want to think, we want to use today, 
right? And we're going to see some terms that I'm going to bring here, bore you to death with some stuff that I think it's phenomenal. But to some of you will be like, really, Leo? But anyways, but for us to carry this idea of comparing what, where we were and perhaps where we are today and where we want to be and where we'll be actually that date that we really... Because this idea of starting a new year, you know, we say Happy New Year, we come to the New Year resolutions and all those things, and, you know, March comes and you're like, oh, gosh, I haven't started this, or if I started, I stopped. Well, much like we do with the gym membership, right? It's only there, you know, okay, we're going to join the gym. It's only there for you to pay, for, your, for you to psychologically think that that is something that I have. Whenever I need it, I will go, and we don't do it. Or if we start, we don't carry over, right? Yes, we need to think in the materialistic way of the material, the resources, the resource, uh, the material resources that we have, as well as mentally, physically, spiritually, right? And for ourselves, not in a good egotistical way, but for ourselves in terms of if that day doesn't come and on planet Earth, but when I get to the other side, will I be happy? Will I be free enough that I will say, at least I tried, right? At least put my effort to be in that position, right? So something that I wanted to share with you. On that note, let me bore you to death. <laughs> uh, Vanessa said I had the whole day, so <laughs> we'll stop for lunch, and then we'll talk about dinner later on, all right? One thing that I wanted to also share with you, I'm going to give you just one hint, one hint. All the pictures that I brought, it is our pictures from the state of Virginia. Some of them are from parks. Some of them are some places that you may know. If you do know, please let me know. But that is the only hint that I'm going to give you. But there is another hint around it, okay? And we'll get there. At, if, at the end, nobody raised their hand or they say, you know, to say anything. I'll go ahead and say it. If you do, you get a prize. I don't know what prize it will be, but we'll see what it is. But... Let's start with this idea of why oh why. Does anybody know what why oh why is? <laughs> it's not what the kids actually um, put on their phone, like um, you know, laughing out loud and all the different things. Because I don't even know them. I'm I'm from a you know the past century, folks. So please, <laughs> I don't know these things. I just said it earlier. Year over year, where were we last year? Right? Where were we? You know, uh, the first of of the f January first, twenty twenty two, right? We go through this every single year, right? We go through this moment every single year, every every month, every week, right? Day after day, we go through you know the same, quote unquote, right? Year over year is actually a method to compare a point where you are, right, in business, um, to another point. Year over year, where were we last year, right? And in terms of, you know, it can be anything. I mean, how much resources we had, how much money we made that day, how much what we had. And it can be broken down into perhaps, you know, this month with last year, this point last year, and this point this year, right? Many people hate the idea. Why? Because there's one thing here that we don't like to do, is to compare. It's horrible to compare sometimes, right? Because our comparison has a negative purpose. And a lot of people that I talk to, oh, I hate comparing. I hate when you compare to my mother. I hate when you compare to my father, to this, to that. Wait a minute. But if we use that for a good purpose, for us to grow, then we change the meaning altogether, right? The problem is when we put that negative connotation to it and we suffer. And it is true, right? Because again, there is no other need than just criticizing it. But when the criticizing is for us to get someplace else, then it's great because it's going to facil facilitate us to get to a better place. Excuse me, one thing. Oh, sorry. It's going to help us to get to a better place, right? So there's nothing wrong with it as long as we use, like anything in life, if we use our, you know, social media to post crazy things, guess what? You know, the results are not going to be that great. So it's the same thing with this. At work, dealing, you know, with the public, dealing, you know, working for a major corporation, it is tough because the idea is let's make more, let's be greater than we were last year. And there's more to it when we start comparing ourselves 
where we are as well in the market, whatever market you're dealing with, right? Because companies are for profit. They want to grow. They want to be better, right? Another, another um, um, idea and method that we want to um, also that we want to bring here is this idea of sequential growth. It's different from the year over year, right? It's different from the idea of where where am I today comparing to Leo 2022, the same date or the same month or the end of the month. Sequential growth is more like, okay, what is the sequential growth that I'm carrying over month after month? So it's me comparing this month over last month, right? Even though it's a different year and whatnot, right? And this is going to make sense as we get to it uh, towards the um, what Emmanuel brings to us. And we have, in order for us to make this comparison, we have to have a baseline. So the baseline is really a point, a starting point. And we can use the baseline today. If we don't remember where we were last year, we can use today, right? So that we can see where we're going to be next year, right? So that on the 1st of 2024, we'll be able to see, okay, this is what I was doing. I was sitting at the SSDA, right? And listening to Leo. Hopefully next year will be better. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, folks. Um, and it could be better, right? It could be better. But you know, it, it hopefully if the information that we're going to bring here today, we will be able to number one to remember, number number one to internalize it and say, wow, that message really touched my heart, and I'm I was able to do A, B, C, right? Or perhaps saying. Now I'm looking for the new grounds. That's great things, right? That can happen with it. But we have to have this baseline. And I, again, I want to take the stigma of, of the idea of comparison and making a negative thing, right? Because we often look at it and we tend, again, to really uh, banish the idea of comparing ourselves and, and moving forward because, because we get stuck. But if we don't have a baseline, for us to compare where we were and where we want to be and project ourselves, we're never going to grow. Perhaps we're going to get to the other <laughs> side the same way when we came to this side as the little one over there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she smiled. It's a good thing. <laughs> so um, the idea is for us to really have this baseline for us to start, right? And I'm glad that nobody here is falling asleep or you know, for the death here, but that's the idea. I wanted to just to bring this thing because it's amazing when we look at companies, organizations, and we look at our, you know, uh, and we think, oh my gosh, how much, how, how do they, how do they do this? How do they come up with these ideas? How do they grow so fast? How, why do they make so much money? Putting aside the idea of being materialistic, I'm not saying that, but the growth, the the development of uh, an institution. There are people sitting down and making these analyses. There are people sitting down in the government as well. What are we doing with the resources that we have? And we forget to do that with our lives. We forget to analyze where we are, right? The state, really, the location, what we have with us, the amount of money that we have, the clothing that we have. Vanessa touched on a very interesting point. We're blessed with so many things that we forget to say, what can I do with these resources? Where can I be at a much better position tomorrow compared to today? And I and I dare to say it, I heard some um, this from, can't remember now, from, uh, I can't remember who said it. But one of the things that I, that it's really interesting is that if I'm gonna do something in my life, how can I utilize that something, whatever I'm trying to accomplish, not to touch one heart, but two, three, four. And if I can go ahead and gather a bunch of people like we're doing here and make a difference in their lives with, let's talk business, this product, why not? Why am I going to limit myself to one person? Why am I going to limit myself to two? Obviously, sometimes we have to have that one-on-one -on -one family members, situations that we have to have and connections with certain individuals, yes. But if I can gather a number of people, that's why we live in community. That's why we have the Spirit of the Center, right? And deliver a message 
or be part of something of a reading like this, why not? Right? Because we're connecting with one another in the physical space, but we're also connecting with one another in the spiritual realm as well, right? And it's undeniable. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here talking about this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in in a spiritual a spirit a spirit session uh, today. And some people may think, Leo, I mean, you're talking about business. But if we take Paul, for example, what was his product? What was Paul's product? What did he deliver? The good news. He didn't have, a, maybe I shouldn't say this, <laughs> a bottle of a soda and he was knocking on everybody's door saying, here, have a product. And he made the best, he was the best uh, um, messenger or person delivering that that product right he was he made himself the the extraordinary i don't think if if he didn't do that we would be here today maybe we would because there are other ways but he was that individual that said this is my product and i will stick to it and i will carry over to the end faithfully despite what the market is saying despite what the government are saying, right? And he delivered a message year over year, right? He had his baseline, right? The baseline was the first copies that he made of the good news to deliver to others, to different people. So just something for us to think about it before we get to the actual message, because the actual message is straightforward as Emmanuel likes to be in many of his message. And as we read through the message, and we talk about it a little bit, I want to not, I, I would like to have you internalize it. We're going to read it and we're going to stop. We're going to do it slowly, right? Because it is something for us to truly bring to the heart. Digestion through the heart, <laughs> if there's such a thing, right? Not for us just to, okay, it's a new year, you know, party time. No, it's for us to slow down, right? Because the, there is already enough going on in our lives that is pretty fast. So the message is from this amazing book called Life and Path uh, through the Ministry of Francisco Cândido Xavier. There are many messages here, this one from different authors and this one from Emmanuel um, that brings that this amazing uh, topic for us to uh, invite us to this new beginning, to this new start, right? New Year is also the renovation of our opportunity to learn, work, and serve. One of the words that we also, um, you know, in the business world that we use is the idea of the opportunity. Sometimes we, we always like to look at ourselves as a failure or something that didn't happen as a failure. Right, but it's an opportunity. It certainly becomes an opportunity, whether we like it or not, to say, "Wait a minute! If it didn't happen the first time, if it was doing something wrong, maybe I didn't try hard enough. Right? Maybe I didn't even try. Right? And it's an opportunity. And the menu comes and say to learn, to work, and to serve. The first one, obviously, is a beautiful thing. Right? When we project ourselves in life in general, not just in the new year that we're going to get to that, but to say, gosh, I have an opportunity to learn new things, to open up a book and read about something that I don't know. If there's, you know, in this, in this trajectory that I would like to call, you know, going back to school and say, let me try to learn something, you know, new, right? If we can all get, I mean, besides, obviously, you know, we all think that, you know, getting a degree or whatnot, but the idea of you sitting down and saying, I did not know that this is going on in the world, right? It's just an amazing feeling. The sense of accomplishment that we have and say, huh, now I can worry a little bit less about me <laughs> and worry about things that perhaps I didn't know was happening, right? One thing that I was actually, um, yes, call me boring. I was actually listening to C-SPAN yesterday and um, there was this, um, conversation about how raising the interest rates right now is affecting 
homeless. How? Well, you raise the, the interest rate, people won't be able to buy so much, so many homes because it's not going to be a, a, a affordable. It that in fact in turn raises rents. People won't be able to rent anymore, and more people will be on the streets. It's like wow. I did not know that had you know a direct impact that way. Or maybe if you want to call indirect. But just little things that sometimes we think it's not a reality. It is a reality in the United States. <clears throat> Perhaps coming from Brazil, you know, we see more homeless people and we kind of deal with that reality a little bit more often, but it's happening here in the US, right? It's happening, people, people are living in tents more often than we think, right? And just something, I'm bringing the idea of learning that of, of something, in fact, that is not obviously positive, but then with the energies that we have, we can go ahead and do some work. And through work, we'll be serving as well. You see the correlation there? You learn something, you explore, explore an area that is attainable to you because nobody's saying here that, you know, once we leave here, we have to go and attend to all the homeless, right? But at least we have an idea that's going on, at least through our prayers, because we're already uh, attending to other needs of other people as well. And that's okay. But as we know, we get that feeling of, wow, you know what? Maybe I need to be at least a little bit more conscientious about the resources that I have, to be thankful for the home that I have, to be thankful for the work that I have that I'm able to pay my bills through, uh, uh, throughout the month. Again, nothing to make us feel negative, but for us to really, let's renew ourselves. It's the renovation side of us that we have this opportunity to learn about new things, to work, and to serve as well. One thing that came to mind as well as we were reading and studying this first is this that we're doing right here. And I want to connect it right now with it because otherwise we'll forget and it's something that later on I'll be thinking to myself, why you didn't say it? You know, I often uh, um, um, consider myself the ambulance. <laughs> I'm not a medium, right? I'm not a person in the sense of medium, but we're all mediums. And you know, one of the things that happens um, uh, to me is perhaps the day before a specific meeting, I'll have a dream that I'm connecting with someone, that I'm talking to someone, don't remember, you know, very, very often. And then when we are participating in a mediumistic meeting or whatnot, that spirit comes that has some kind of resemblance to the uh, dreams or connections that I had or what I was feeling in the physical body the day before. And I'm like, mm, okay, why? God allows us, God allows us to connect with these minds who are suffering on the other side so that they can come with us to the spirit to center and they're also help at the spirit to center. This is not Leo saying, I'm just a proving, living proof of it, but Emmanuel talks about it, John of the Angelus talks about it, Manuel Philomeno de Milano talks about it, because the work is happening not only in the physical, but we are also, besides learning when we come to the spiritual center, we're also working and serving. Sometimes we get that irate feeling the day before, oh my gosh, why am I feeling this way? Right? Sometimes we get that desperation that everything is running smoothly in our lives, but why do I have to go? And sometimes we back up. We say, you know what, uh, today I'm going to stay home. And we miss that opportunity to serve, right? And it happens more often than we think. As a paternal friend, time reincarnates in the body of the calendar, and it opens brighter horizons for the needed ascension. Why do we think that Emmanuel starts this idea as a paternal friend? I dare to ask you guys, have you ever thought or had that feeling, oh, here we go again, it's Monday. <laughs> oh, here we go again. It's January the 1st. Oh, that nostalgic feeling that we feel like, oh, what have I done? But it's a paternal friend saying, look, let's restart. Let's get up. Let's do our best, right? It, it reincarnates in the body of the calendar. This 365 days that we have ahead of us right now to say, you know what, I'm going to make a difference today. I'm going to be somebody else, right? As, you know, we like to joke about it sometimes, you know, fake it until it becomes reality, right? Sometimes we have to push ourselves and really, you know, have 
you know, kick ourselves, you know, in the behind and say, let's go. We have to do it, right? Take the membership and really go, <laughs> you know? Don't just pay it. Really utilize it, you know? Get your money worth of it. So it's one of those things that we really have to get ourselves out of it because it is that feeling that will set you perhaps in the same position that you were in the past year or perhaps even in a lower scale, if we could put that way. Let's say I'm not the negative, but in a lower scale. And it opens up, opens brighter horizons for the needed ascension. It's nothing for us to, you know, if you think about it, it's for our own benefit and the benefit of others, consequently, right? Because it, it only pushes us to become a better individual, to deal with our difficulties, as we're going to see pretty soon here. Not the difficult of, I have to go to work, but all the difficulties that are much more important if we think about it. But to say, okay, I conquered this, so what's next? What's next? And then we rest, right? And then we take our time off, and then we go back again and reanalyze things. Remember that the year starts over again as a new day, asking you to fulfill our old resolutions, the ones that you did not have courage to accomplish. Many of us are thinking, gosh, yes, I promised so much <laughs> to myself and to others last year, and it didn't happen, right? It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because we're, as I heard from um, uh, a good friend of mine this week, Leo, we're not monks, <laughs> you know? We don't, um, I'm not saying that we, or escaping from our or for our issues, but it's not that we don't want to deal with life thinking that we're not going to have our contradictions and everything would be perfect, right? They have their purpose. But we will feel, we will think. And most of the time, because of our level of maturity, number one, and number two, it is something that is inside of us to protect yourself, right? law of preservation that inside of us that we're still not yet uh, processing in the best way possible. It's going to take some million, or millions of years for us to understand better the idea of preserving ourselves. It's in the spirit book, right? We preserve ourselves in different ways. We tend to attack. We tend to reserve ourselves too much. Uh, perhaps we deal with, you know, in different ways, right? But it's for us to take those resolutions and to say, you know what, that's going to still stay on the other side because I already started other things, but I'm going to put myself into a calendar, part of the calendar, something in the calendar that is going to allow me to say, now I need to start that. Because that's important to me, and being important to me it will be important for others as well. Going back to that principle that we mentioned earlier today, always thinking not only for ourselves, but how will this impact not only one person, two individuals, but a group of other individuals, right? If you have enemies, work throughout the hours to open the path of reconciliation. This part we can skip because I don't think we have enemies. <laughs> right? No. No, it's not true. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> because we need to redefine the idea of enemies. Right? It's not the enemies like we used to see in Western movies, right? You know, let's go ahead and have the duel, right? No. Well, sometimes we actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we do that, not directly, but with our intentions, right? You know, it, so much so that we have wars throughout the world. They were actually a, a, an, an extrapolation of how we're feeling, not only as an individual, but also family members, you know, family groups, right? Groups in society and whatnot. It reflects that way. But this idea of enemy, we have to analyze in a different way. What are the enemies that we have? Because we live in a pretty quiet and decent society that we stop at a stop sign, we obey the, the laws, right? But what, what are the enemies that we have? Say one. <laughs> if you would like to say, obviously, you, know, you don't have to say it. But, I mean, what are the things that we can consider enemies? What are the, the enemies that we have inside of us that 
perhaps really stop. Go ahead. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. Right? Where are the negative thoughts connected to? Right? It's ourselves. The first enemy that we have is ourselves. It's interesting how when we learn to with spirituality or spiritism specifically, since we're on this in this <clears throat> room here, that the old Leo starts clashing with the new Leo, that now we have this information. It's natural. This is a beautiful thing that is happening. It's not negative at all, but we see as an enemy. And we start dwelling with ourselves. The old person is saying, do it, right? And the new one, the, the, the new 2023 Leo is like, wait a minute. I learn about consequences. <laughs> I learn about reincarnation. If I do this now, there will be a consequence tomorrow. And we see this old being as an enemy. But once more, I will say it again. Then we can say it again later on. It's okay. The problem is how we treat it. How we go talk to that old Leo saying, all right, here's the thing. So what's your position on all this? <laughs> Give time to talk. Give time to talk to it and really analyze why it wants to be that way, the reasons why, right? What took that Leo to be that way? And then you give your presentation of the new Leo or the new self, right? And it's okay because you don't want to that to carry over because it will get to a point that one will overpower the other in a battle, in a much more hurtful battle. And we don't want that because we're talking with ourselves. Do we want to battle with ourselves? No, we don't want to battle with others. The laws are already saying to us, don't battle with one another, right? You know, what the, the message, the good news is treat, you know, one another as you treat yourself. If we're not battling with others, why would we <clears throat> battle with us? And then it comes that time of reconciliation, right? Why you didn't fulfill the rules of the old resolutions of the last year? Well, didn't get to it. And it's okay. We're going to get to it this year. See, we're going back again and, you know, dealing with the problems of the past, not in a positive way, but in a negative way, right? And we can go ahead and restart this reconciliation. And I say restart because often we start also reconciliation and we put it aside, right? By the way, this is, does anyone know what the dogwood is? Tree. See, they know, <laughs> they know. And many continue to say, if you were offended, forgive. So love sheds light onto the pathway ahead of you. This passage here should have been connected to the other part because I also would like to connect this idea that the offenses, right? Because we can carry the offenses from our, you know, from ourselves first. And I'm going back to the self before we can externalize onto others because we cannot offer most of the time, or if not all the time, what we don't have. So if we cannot forgive ourselves, how are we going to forgive others, right? If we don't start with the idea of, okay, that is the old me, this is a new beginning, this is a new start, this is the amount of information that I had then, and this is the amount of information that I have now to make a better, to have a better perception, and it's okay. And once we start to internalize this more and more, and we do it more and more, I'll give you an example. And one of the things that I have been trying to do more often than not, is to ask why I'm having such thoughts. And I know there is a parallel with, okay, I'm having this thought because it's not mine. It may be from, you know, a spiritual friend, depending on the situation, what I see, what I connect. I'm looking at the clock as 1145, and I can connect that time with something else, and then that thought comes. There is a, you see how it goes? It's crazy. It's amazing. It's a crazy and amazing um, um, perspective because you, you start thinking about, wow, and you start digging through really why you feel it. But sometimes there are certain things that you really start thinking about and you start really analyzing the feeling beyond the, the thought that you will say, wow, 
I did not know that this was connected to something that I lived perhaps three months ago that is still inside of me, right? An offense that I received that now I'm actually really, you know, it's still resonating inside of me. And I dare to say also, why do I have that shoulder pain that I don't know where it came, comes from? It's where it's reflecting in the body. It's the body saying, all right, let it out, right? And you think that it's somebody, like somebody punching the back or something. No, nothing happened, but you have that shoulder pain. I'm just giving an example. I don't have a shoulder pain, thank God. <laughs> but it really connects you know, to your body. It comes out, right? And we don't know. So let us start with this idea of forgiving. Let us start with this idea of changing within ourselves so we can actually do this, so we can shed light onto the pathway ahead of you, of us. Because if we don't let go, that bag of bricks that we're carrying with us, we're not going to be able to build the pathway. Put the brakes down, lay the pathway, right? If you rested too much, go back to the plow of your duties and sow goodness fearlessly in the forthcoming harvest. Rest is necessary in all certain ways, not only the physical body. Why do we pray? Why do we have our meditation, right? In Spiritism, John of the Angelus is came into this this idea of of the psychological part of the being to tell us that we need to do this more often than not, right? And it doesn't have to be. It would be nice to have a set schedule, right? Because that way we also can connect with higher minds and higher minds, and we have a specific time of the day, right? When we're exercising, perhaps that could be that moment of us of of meditation. But so. Let's redefine also these terms that is being used here because it's not just the matter, the, a matter of sitting down, preparing ourselves to go to sleep and sleep. No, right? It's the rest of even of what we're proposing here to start or to think of something that we need to do, right? Or to over renewal. Sometimes we need rest of, to, for that moment. I'll, let me put aside. Because it becomes overwhelming if you think that that is the only thing of your life, right? That goes to the work, that goes to our partners, our kids, life in general. The only thing that we don't have to do, obviously, is to connect with God. Because that is the best way, the best um, um, rest that we have. Yesterday, I was listening to a talk show as well. Um, um, Yasmin Araujo. Madeira, yeah, she said something really interesting that um, about Mother Teresa that she was asked, you know, what do you um, what do you say that um, when you're Mother Teresa was asked, what do you say to God when you're having a conversation with God? And Mother Teresa answered, um, I don't say anything, I just listen. And what does God tell you um, when you're talking to Him? He doesn't say anything. He just listens. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. But think about it. To get to that state that you give yourself freely to that moment, you're connecting with God. Forget about words. Forget about you know conversation. Let's just be in the moment, right? And it's a beautiful thing, right? And it's just amazing that we forget about this idea of resting. But don't rest too much, as Emmanuel was saying. Don't let your body get into a position where becomes flat out laziness, right? It needs to be movement. It needs to be movement. In the past, we would go through a procedure at you know through of the physical body and we would be told to do what? To rest. Now one of the reasons. There are other reasons as well because, because hospitals they need to make money. The hospital, the doctor will tell you what? Get up and move. Because the body, the, the, the blood needs to flow. We have to move. The machine was made to move. It wasn't intended to just to sit and rest, right? And we become more attentive in everything corresponds to life um, when we are moving. If sadness calls you, forget it and look for the serene joy of a happy conscience in the fulfilled duty. If sadness calls you, Forget it and look for the serene joy of a happy conscience in the fulfilled duty. 
When we are said, do we like to be said? I'll give you another question. No, we don't. Obviously, we don't like to be said. Do we understand why we are said? Or better yet, do we acknowledge that we are said? No, right? Because we think sadness is something very negative, very bad, right? But there is a purpose. There is a reason why we're feeling sad. And if we don't acknowledge it, right, we're in trouble. Because that's, again, it's another feeling that's going to be postponed, that we never gave a thought to it, or at least analyzed the reason why we're feeling sad, that we can fix it. You can't fix it anything if you don't acknowledge, if you don't know where it's coming from, if you don't know the source of it, guess what? The next day or the day after, you will feel it again. What Emmanuel is saying to the idea of forgetting it is not to push it aside. It's not to step on and say, done. No, okay, now I understand. This is what is making me sad. Perhaps I'm missing something. Perhaps I feel this way because of something that, you know, that happened in my life. I'll put it aside now that I understand, and I'll look for the serene joy. In a replacement, not in the sense of, okay, pushing aside, but a replacement of something that I will not let that happen again. If it was something that, it, it, as a consequence of an offense, right, that I received, I will actually restore that feeling and connect with the serene joy. Think of the up as an opportunity, as we said before. What if I didn't have the opportunity that, to feel that sadness? Would I change? Would I become a better person in the year to come? No, because we didn't feel it anything. We didn't connect. We didn't have that disconnect with that individual or that group of people, right? So it's okay in, in the sense that it's going to allow us to be a better person, right? But again, look for the serene joy of a happy conscience in the fulfilled duty. It's to do unto others what it used to be done to you. Forgive. Offer something to that individual, to that group of people. Project yourself in a more positive way because perhaps it could be something that we're lacking. And as we serve, as we do something different, the individual or the individuals will see that, you know what, yes, that sadness will go away. Oh, but it's too hard. It is hard. <laughs> it is hard to go back to the situations and the moments of our lives that we lack something, that we didn't give ourselves too well, right? Or we didn't present ourselves too well. We say something that perhaps made others upset. We went against the status quo, right? which I'm not saying that the status quo is always the, the greatest, but we need to respect. New year, new day. Smile to those who have hurt you and seek harmony with the ones who still do not understand you. This is amazing because one of the, the, the craziest challenges that we have on planet Earth right now is what I said a little bit earlier today, and I give myself, put myself in this good bunch. <laughs> is to live, is to try to live a spiritual life in a materialistic world. It is very hard. Because one, part of you is saying A, part of you is saying B, right? And it's so hard. This is so hard. And I'm not trying to say in, in the materialistic world in terms of the material that we have, but how we function, how we connect, that everything is perhaps around the, the physical body, right? Forgetting that there is a consequence, forgetting that there, there will be reincarnations, not only of Leo, but each one of us, and many of these, I guess I said at the beginning, <laughs> you know, perhaps it was just the, the century, right, that we connect, but we connected other centuries too, right, for sure, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Think of all the, all the, 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 that we have lived, that we have connected, that we have done, has brought us to this moment. Uh, 5 of 12, the first of 2023 to be together. There's no, there's no what ifs, right? Everything that we have done brought us here. 
yeah, we made a decision. And thanks for the decision we were connected today. But some of the decisions were made way before this, unconsciously, right? For us to be here today. So when we look at this idea of transcending, connecting, right? We, we, we have to br bring this perspective of utilizing our time to become a better individual, to smile to those, because it's an opportunity, because it's a way for us to transcend with one another as well. And people will not understand that now we're trying to be a more spiritualized individual than we were yesterday. We still attend to work. We still attend to, you know, the, the physical part of our lives. But my, my, what I'm aiming for is not of this world. And what does he, Jesus teach us? His kingdom, not of this world. Now you see, it, it takes a different meaning, right? Because we're looking for things that is perhaps not up here. And that's why sometimes when we started the year, we feel that disconnect. It's like there's the nostalgic feeling that perhaps, yes, I'm here, but something is missing. Well, we need to find it because it's around us. We just have to build it together, right? Where more people will be in the same boat as we are. It's not that we're trying to brainwash anybody, but to really look at it, well, guess what? Tomorrow, the physical life will be there too, whether in this body or in a new body, hopefully, but it'll be there. But the essence, we need to transcend, right? Continue because we're not going to be here the whole day. <laughs> we're legal talking. We can be here the whole day, but <laughs> remember that there is more ignorance than evil around your life. Do not either curse or condemn. It's very easy for us to blame others, for us to judge others, thinking that they're evil. And this is a, a, a very nice way, a very liberating way to see life, right? There is more ignorance, people, than evil. People will act. Let's take a step back and say here, there are people that will act directly with a evil agenda, if we can put it that way. We're on planet Earth. You know, studying part of my study is Homeland Security, and we have to be really, really, really thankful for having the liberty, the freedom that we have to perhaps drive an hour to get to another state, to transit from one place to the other. There is order. And if the order wasn't there, guess what? We wouldn't be here. So there's much being done in society so that this, this evil doesn't happen. If we were to count the number of things that does not happen in our society, and I'm talking locally, right? And that's why we need to um, um, help law, law enforcement. We also have to enforce law in, in a good way by our behaviors, right? Let's do it first so that we can go ahead and, and model it. Um, but really thank for the people who really fight for us, right? But that's just one thing aside. But most of the time, it's just ignorance because people don't know any better. Because people in us, and I include myself again on this, we don't understand that there will be a consequence, there will be a tomorrow. That if I do this, perhaps it will generate a, a number of other events that I will have to fix it tomorrow. And yes, we will have to come and fix it. And it's beautiful, that's another opportunity, right? But do we want to do, again, do we want to start over to fix something that right now I have the power not to do or to actually do it? Because sometimes we err by not doing, by not taking the chance or the opportunity, seizing the opportunity that we have and start something new. It's not about just retrieving and say, oh, no, this is, well, sometimes we have to act. We have to be determined enough that perhaps this is the moment that I have to say something, that I have to change, that I have to also alert other. And Manuel's is very, um, um, in a message that we got, uh, read apprentices here sorry that we read at the the gospel at home and many reminds us that we have the duty to go and help others for those that perhaps and he says it those who don't don't know how to read and we think that's just reading remember that the syllable no we're talking about read life read you know in in general right those who cannot 
connect with the environment. People who are afraid to actually connect, to sit in a location like this and to listen to a talk. So people are afraid. We will bring them by the hand, right? And so on and so forth. We have this duty, right, to do something. Because people, unfortunately, is the ignorance of not knowing. Not to be an ignorant individual, but not knowing, not having the capability to take that step forward. Help enlightening the pathway of those around you who are in an ease darkness. Do not either get discouraged or sorrowful. It happens more often than not that we get discouraged before we even get to it, right? Before we even um, start the battle, the good battle. We're, oh, this is going to cost too much. This is going to take too much time. This is going to take too much effort. I have other things to, to attend to. Excuses. It is. I mean, it's, it's okay. Again, we're trying to preserve ourselves, right? We're trying to preserve the old being side of us. We don't want to get out of that comfortable zone, right? And to find something new because it takes a lot of energy when you, when you find something new, when you have to understand something new. If you take a book or a passage to read is one thing. When you take a passage to read and study, believe me, it will make us hungry. <laughs> and we want lunch. We want this. We want that, right? It's, it's normal. It's a beautiful thing that happens to us. But we get to this discouragement and we get to this sorrowful. And then next year, let's connect to the message here. We look back and say, oh, gosh, you know. And then those who are actually in need of being enlightened, they're in the same way or perhaps in a worse condition when we met them, right? So it's important for us to look at this. And on the, on the flip side, what I would say as well, and I'll put bring Paul as an example as well. Let's not waste time. And, and Jesus, in another passage that we study too at home, when he goes to um, one of the individuals, um, like Zacchaeus, for example, I don't remember. It's a different. It's a different teaching of Jesus. He saw that Zacchaeus was actually up to part to what he was trying to propose to himself and to his family as well, right? To change. Right, that moment of change, right? And Jesus did what? He went and had dinner with him. But did Jesus do this with everybody? No. And you may say, wow, this is hard. No, he wasn't wasting time. There is a passage of Paul. Vanessa may remember this. Let's say it, guys. Women remember things much better than we do anyway. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, you know, so, but there's a passage of Paul and Stephen when Paul uh, was, who, who was he that he, the gentleman, the person was trying to take his ne nephew with him? Barnabas, Barnabas right? Yeah. And Paul said, no, no. Yeah. Why? Because he, ne he knew that that was going to damage. His product. When I say his, the good news, because he had people to a, a number of people to connect, and if that one individual was connected with him, those other individuals were going to suffer. When I read it first, I gotta tell you, there are certain things that I look at. I'm like, wow, but your your friend's nephew just taking with him, but he they did not know that they're going to be stoned, that they're going to be thrown off the road. Right, that there were going to be sarcasm, and that young Matthew would be a problem to the dissemination of the good news. So when we read this as well, yes, help enlighten the pathway of those around us, but let's not waste time, because there are certain moments of our lives that we say it once, twice, three times, and unfortunately, it's not heard, and it, you're devaluing what you're bringing. To society because it's not being listened. Money, since we were talking about business earlier, right? After a certain time, what happens? You get some old bills that the Federal Reserve has to take it back and remake it, right? You, re you have to remake the money because it, it kind of it's going to be an old bill, right? So it kind of loses its value because it went around so many times and People just utilize it, <laughs> didn't pay attention. I'm just using a, an, an analogy right here. But we have to be careful with that as well. 
so that our energy is being pushed, is being utilized, multiplied in the best way possible. Coming to an end here, cultivate hope in those who are suffering the coldness of disenchantment or indifference. Two topics right here that it begs us to study, right? The disenchantment enchantment of life and indifference. Two points of our lives that we do not want to get to it. And I have to say, I have been there before several times. And the worst feeling ever is when somebody tells you that they have a pain and you are indifferent about it. It's sad. It's really sad. And I say this, you know, hoping that it doesn't happen, that I don't fall in that pit again. But it's pretty tough because you are so numbed, you know, by what's happening, right? Because of the uh, sometimes unforgiveness, sometimes the things that you go through, the pains that you also have that you look at and say, okay, I have bigger problems. Sometimes we do. I acknowledge that. Sometimes we do have bigger problems. But we don't want to get into this path because we're all together, right? And if we allow ourselves in this in this in this uh, pathway, it's really hard to get out. Since we're not there, hopefully, let us make sure that we're cheering people out of it as well, and show them that there are bigger things in life. Right? Read a message, pray. The sun is shining outside. Right? It's forty-seven degrees. I think it's a little bit hotter here, and it's winter time. But it's not that cold. So it's uh, bring the positive out. Change the subject. I deal with the public and sometimes I hear things and I'm like, wow. Right? And then I say something different or I smile or make a joke or something. And things change a little bit. Right? The perspective of life changes a little bit. Because we find people in this pathway that is very, very hard to get out. Right? The reason I say that I have felt this way is for us to remember that we have felt this way and we had a person or a group of friends or something, right, that took us out of there. Spiritism takes out of the, us out of there every single day. <laughs> Our mentors. So we have been there. Do we want others to be there too? No. Do not forget that Jesus has never been in despair with us as an occult friend by our side. He patiently and kindly repeats to us always and this is the final moment here love and serve always help others helping yourself because tomorrow i will be with you waiting for the sweet joy of your open heart you know it's interesting because help others helping yourself it seems like an egotistical thing to say right but if you help others, automatically you're helping yourself. If you're helping yourself, automatically you're helping others. You can't run from this, right? So if I am conducting myself well in society, at, at the family, or doing whatever we're doing, our based on our moral standards, because this moral standard is only going to get better, it's only going to develop, right? We're helping others. If others are doing, if I'm doing and others are perceiving this, right, they hopefully will follow through. They will think, well, if Leo can do it, I can do this as well, right? And I will look at it and say, if John can do it, I can do it as well. He's better because he accomplished before me, <laughs> but he's, that is not, that shouldn't be a limitation for me not to try it as well. There shouldn't be a limitation for others to try if I tried and I succeeded, right? And it becomes a trend. It becomes a trend. It's amazing because any business, I'll bring it back to the business, because we can look at these different structures, right, and say, wow, if you're doing I can do this with my life. It's my business, right? It's a, it's amazing in a, in a sector, right? If, if one company is doing and they're successful, if they don't have one thing called a patent <laughs> that stops other companies from doing, they follow through. Why? Because it's a no-brainer. Why reinvent the wheel, right? So why reinvent the wheel when we have these messages, when we have the good news? Follow it. Make that our, our product. 
it's not like we're going to, you know, put the Bible under, you know, arms and, you know, I'm going to preach to everyone, but preach it as we do it, as we have our conversation, as we, as we do things at home, right? As we go to work, right? Find that joy of, okay, yeah, work is really hard. And I'm saying work because 365 days of the year, most of those days will be at work, right? We have to be at work. Thank God, right? But make it joyful. Make it for others. But first, make it for ourselves, right? And Jesus, for sure, even though it's his occult friend here, because it's not that Jesus is someplace else. We put Jesus someplace else. He's there. Waiting for us to open our hearts and be with us, right? He's not only going to be with us here, but as we also transcend from this body to this back to the spiritual life, and hopefully for us to be in a much better place in the next reincarnation around, right? So this is the message, and we can share, if Anissa can share with you as well, that perhaps we can put in our calendars. Let us read this every first of each month, right? Let us connect with it again, first of each month. I know I'm going over my time a little bit here, but I want to propose something to you guys after this. But it's a reminded us that is this rotation around the sun, right? And what is the sun again? Does anybody remember what you said? Hmm? <laughs> what are the rays of the sun touching our bodies right now that takes time? To get to us, right? There is one thing, beautiful thing here. It's not that they're going around us on planet Earth. It's not, it's not that things are going around us as individuals. No. We're going around a much bigger body. Right? We are going around the sun. The sun keeping us together at a specific, let's say, rate for lack of better words, right? Because it's bigger. And it's bigger for the sense, as Vanessa said, uh, an amazing group of spirits vibrating in such a positive way that not only sends us warmth, but this ray of light that transcends the physical body and gives us joy to see the sun, gives us joy to to be alive, to be in, in a new day again, right? And gives us the... The, the different seasons, especially here in the northern hemisphere, right? That we see um, Virginia, at least in these states here, uh, the north part of the, of the country, uh, different seasons as well, right? The changes in the environment, which is so beautiful as well, right? But so so this this rotation around the sun is not just 365 days beyond that. When we start connecting again with higher minds, with the, the true purpose of life, it changes our perspective about life, a perspective about tomorrow, a perspective about the first of the year, right? So my proposal to you is the following. We have five minutes? Okay. Um, you have your cell phone? I know this is a spiritist meeting and we're asking for the cell phone. You can send a message to yourself right now, who, uh, actually, as if you're going to create a message for someone, but pull your name. Just type the your phone number or your type, if you have your name, type your phone number. Let's do it. It's okay. Send a message to yourself. And what would you like to wear, what would you like to change in this year? Right? Um, you can be brief. Or you can send a reminder to yourself to say, I need to sit down and do this tonight before I go to bed. Just something that you will it will click or something that is in our heart that we need to, to change, right? And we are going to revisit this message next year. Year over year, I will let you do the progressive um, I'll let you do, and I'm forgetting about my terms now. Look at me. I'll let you do the, the sequential growth <laughs> month by month where we are. Write something to yourself. Where, what, what would I would like to, to accomplish in my life? And that can be morally, 
intellectually at work, there's something that is bothering you. Um, I, I want to pray more. I want to I'm just throw any ideas out there, but I'll let you. And then in your own, in your own, um, on your own um, schedule there, set yourself a reminder for the 1st of January, 2024 to do what we just did. To say, revisit my goals. <laughs> Revisit my goal because if we don't if we don't remind ourselves, it's really whatever we learn. I mean, when we come to the spirit to center, the only thing that we can ask that we can that we can pray to God is for us to exercise what we, what we learn. I can't ask you to you know, did you do what you're supposed to do? No, we pray that people will you know take to heart and really apply it. Because if we don't apply, it, it's going to be just a new year, <laughs> just the new year, right? Are we there? Do we put a, did we put a reminder? All right. Hopefully, we'll be part of it as well. That you know, we guys will remind ourselves um, that we are having this conversation beyond a a talk, beyond a you know a a lecture or whatnot. Because as I said before, it's not just you know for you, but it's for me as well. I need to do this you know more often than not. Um, but did anybody pay attention to the pictures? Okay, so what happened to the pictures? Yes, yes. <laughs> Much like the year, right? That we start, and if we 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 went from 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 winter, right, to spring, fall. I'm sorry, summer. I'm jumping. I'm jumping summer because I, I get in trouble during the summer. I like to go to the beach. Right. Those the, actually the beach that we actually brought is actually a, a picture of a Cinco Teak um, island. It's really, really beautiful place that we all uh, need to visit. Um, but we have these new seasons. Why do we have the new seasons? I, it's a moment of renew, right? It's a new start. Let us utilize it because nature is telling us something new is happening. A change is happening. And have we changed? Have we become a new individual, renewing ourselves and the vows that, that Emmanuel, the proposal that Emmanuel brings? It's not to have a new home, have a new clothing, have a new car. No, that's product, right? The product of a, a life well lived, right? But of ourselves. Have we made amendments to, to ourselves? Have we taken care of the enemies? Have we forgive more often than not? I say more often than not because I don't want anybody to think that we're monks, right? as we said here, because it's not going to happen every time. We have our limitations, but let's propose that perhaps six months from now, I will do so. I will revisit that point that right now is so hard for me to revisit or to deal with it, right? So nature is telling us it's happening, right? It's going to change whether we like it or not. Some of us don't like the heat. It's going to come. Some of us <laughs> don't like the cold, but it's here, right? <laughs> I love to be at the beach. Vanessa rescued me several times from going to the beach. I gotta tell you, <laughs> no, Leo, we have to go to the center. We have to be no that Sunday, you know. But so it, it's a it, the beach now has a different meaning for me, by the way. Yeah, um, but it's it's just one of those things that you know it's happening. All the time, and we close our eyes to it, we become numb to it because it's so repetitive. So let us wipe that, you know, feeling of the new beginning. The the oh my gosh, again the Monday. No, it's a Monday. It's a new day. It's a new week, right? So you know, let's embrace it in on a positive way instead of making it tiring, right, for all of us, right? But we have to have a purpose. We have to make these baseline. We have to have a comparison. But for us to change to the better, we hope that this can be. And these are my references. Just you know, I, I forgot to actually put the references of the pictures as well. But as I said earlier, these are pictures of Virginia, uh, the state of Virginia, parks and 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 beautiful places. Um, and I bring this as well because we also have to pay attention to where we live, right? The environment that we have. That's one of the resources that we have, right? 
and I was actually coming over here. I read um, 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 one of the, the signs saying the George Washington Expressway. And I was like, yeah, George Washington from Virginia, right? And who is George Washington, right? And then we start thinking again, why was I thinking about this, right? <laughs> and then you're, you're telling yourself to, you know, get to know more, right? This beautiful state, this beautiful opportunity that we have in our hands. So with no further ado, thank you so much for this opportunity to share this with you. Um, come and talk about the new year. And if you need anything, please share your comments with me, you know, later on. If you want my phone, you know, if you want me to be part of, of, of that, you know, moment of 2024, let me be part of it because it will be a, a, a great, not, can't say that I'm going to offer much more than this, but definitely, you know, I'm really happy, um, you know, the joy of coming to a place where we see so many faces. I was talking to Carlos as well about, you know, the kids, the many kids that are now in a session like this, being our future as well, it's a beautiful thing for this state and for this country as well. So thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. So we interesting you. It's it's almost 24 years, almost a quarter century that we met in this reincarnation. Believe it or not, we were quite young and we made a choice. We still are. We still are, I know. <laughs> Yes, and and it's so interesting. We made a choice, a choice to be spiritists, a choice to be friends in the good. When we talk about our resolutions, of course, we want God's designs to be our resolutions. You know, because in the Spiritist magazine that was just released. In our editorial, we talk about freedom and choices. And there is a huge difference. Often we make choices based on conditions, on old patterns. And we think we are freeing ourselves by making those choices. Actually, we're just imprisoning ourselves. And the reverse is true. When we are fulfilling our duties as a man says, will find happiness. We can go back to where Leo was saying to us, and the menu is very clear. Look for the serene joy of a happy conscience in the fulfilled duty. When we choose to fulfill our duties, we find freedom. May the resolutions of this new year, as Leo said, be everything that God made us to be. When people say, I don't believe in God, then we ask, did you make yourself at all? You created yourself, yourself made? Is that what it is? Because as far as I know, we didn't create ourselves. So whatever created you, we call God and must have created for a good purpose. What is that purpose? So our quest is to find resolutions that are aligned to God's designs so we do not repeat the same old mistakes, right? And I know when Leo began it, he said we would be here on the 1st of January. Well, Leo is so dutiful. I will never forget <laughs> the day we had a talk to give in New York. And he was going to come with us. We were in Baltimore. And he asked, Vanessa, what time we're going to leave? And I said, 5 a.m. But I was kidding. I said, 7 a.m. But this, I, I joked with him. I said, 5 a.m. And at the time, no longer. I used to wake up at 5 a.m. to work out. And then I was leaving Baltimore City. Suddenly, somebody knocked at the door at 5 a.m. I'm like, man, oh my gosh, who is knocking at my door at 5 Somebody who is drunk in the streets. I was afraid. And then I see Leo calling the cell phone. I said, man, I'm here downstairs at 5 a.m.? I didn't mean for you to come at 5 a.m. I was supposed to come at 7 a.m. And that's how beautiful he is. Mm-hmm. So here we are on the 1st of January in Leo 
certainly came to to have this. That's why he's so joyful because he's always fulfilling his duties. Um, except when he wants to go to the beach and surf, right? <laughs> but we rescued him from Florida, the vortex of Florida. Said, Come back to the land of the brave and the free, right? The good obsessors. <laughs> <laughs> so we are very thankful to you, Leo, for coming and sharing this knowledge that is beyond what we could imagine today and preparing us for the good works of this year remember tying up huh? tying up this powerful message emmanuel doesn't sugarcoat and say oh, we're so beautiful we're gonna be angels and says guys forget the hammock the other day a woman died on a hammock do you believe it yeah yes yeah, she was there she brought the dog boom and died so forget the hammock sorry for the news but reality so laziness no what we want emmanuel says we should recognize that the first step towards freedom liberation will always be work but this work is to be useful in constructing beautiful feelings like we're doing today it's not the work the job it's this work inside of us that's why we're here to build these friendships in the good to be useful to think of those who are <laughs> suffering because guys our suffering is nothing compared to people like we saw yesterday at the shelter we stopped by at a shelter yesterday and we entered, Carlos and I, and there is a guy at the door. And this guy looks at us and says, you have a cigarette? Carlos says, no, we don't smoke. Sorry. I don't know why we say sorry, right? Because we shouldn't be sorry at all. But of course, we're just empathic. We go in, people sleeping on chairs. It was raining outside. There were people sleeping outside of the shelter. And then when we leave, the same guy looks at us and asks again, do you have a cigarette? And I'm like, Carlos, can you believe it? How come he's so young? He looks like the people we see at the nursing home. They are forgetting things. And then Carl said, no, he doesn't pay attention when he's to the people he sees. How can we think of ourselves when we see this type of misery? We can't. So it's easy. The resolution is be selfless. As Paul of Tarsus says, the talisman of miracles is in humility and selflessness. Humility is hard, but selflessness is much easier because it's just like, forget about you. Who are you? No, tell me you. Who are you? And that's it. We don't need to worry. Unlike a teacher who came to me one day and said, you need to teach Virginia to be selfless selfish and i'm like i can't because i teach her every day the opposite virginia think of your friends virginia think of this and she's like no but she needs to protect herself because who's going to take care of herself i don't think i want to go there right should i talk about god so when you hear a teacher telling a parent that your child needs to be selfish, we're in a world that needs help. Because who is going to protect us? Should we answer? G-O-D. God. God. God and God. God cares, protects, provides. We don't need to be selfish to be protected. Let's be selfless. Selfless. 
selfless. I don't know either. We're learning. We're all learning. We're all learning. And that's the beauty of being together. Imagine in a quarter century from now. Can you imagine? Where are we going to be? As Leo presented to us the timeline, talking about comparing the sequential growth. Let us project ourselves. Andrea Luis has a beautiful message that we want to wrap up with. Okay? Hi. As Leo proposed the exercise, Andrea Luis says, the spiritist that has not changed in three years is not doing well. <clears throat> okay, there you go. We need to compare. So Leo is right. Let us observe, compare ourselves to ourselves and grow. Even if it's a step ahead, it's growth. Grow, grow, and grow inside of us in our true divine essence. We now have also the privilege of having Leandro here with us. And he's going to prepare us for the passes with uh, some songs. I don't know, you tell us. Yeah, before the prayer of St. Francis, right? Yeah. yeah. So we can. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's All right. Great. I know Christmas has passed, but <laughs> we're gonna do Feliz Navidad. No, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know Christmas has passed, but as the song says, there is the most wonderful time of the year. So we, oh yeah, maybe we sing another song to, to remind us that Jesus should be born inside of us every day, right? Oh, and not, okay. and it's the new year as well. I'm gonna song that the first part is in Portuguese and the second is in Thank you. 
Let us just help with this fine around by visualizing Master Jesus with us. As he said, love and serve always. And he's always here with us as we open our hearts. Thank you. 
Beloved Mother, Father, God, we close our eyes and open our hearts to your greatness. And we thank you, God, for loving us even much before we learned and felt your existence. Thank you for loving us so unconditionally as to give us not only this reincarnation, but a new year and a new day every 24 hours for all of us in both realms to begin anew. We are ashamed of the times, dear God, when we only thought of ourselves. For now, our prayer is not on our behalf, but on behalf of many others. So visualizing Master Jesus, distributing the living waters of hope, compassion, joy, and love, we pray for all of those who at this time do not have a shelter, May they find a shelter, dear God, in your heart symbolically. We pray as well for all of those <coughs> fighting with addictions of all sorts, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. We pray, dear God, so that through your love, and the loving presence of Master Jesus, they may come to realize that they are beloved children of yours. We also pray for our brothers and sisters who don't even know they are suffering, but who surrender to rage, jealousy, envy, spite every day of their lives. We pray so that they can find healing in your love and kindness. We also pray for those who do not yet recognize you, dear Lord. We pray so that they find in your love the inspiration to continue moving forward, knowing that all of us are destined to progress. We also pray for those in shelters, in nursing homes, in psychiatric institutions, and in prisons, hoping and knowing for certain that in your presence they may find hope and true freedom. We also pray for every family on the earth, every mother on the earth, father on the earth, child on the earth, and the elderly on the earth so that they may receive your visit through master jesus and feel renewed from within 
visualizing the whole planet enveloped in your vibrations of love, dear God. We pray so that we too love more, serve more, and dedicate ourselves to your will, not only now in 2023, but always. With much gratitude in our hearts for the Spirit of Society of Virginia, Kardec Radio, and all the works of the good that you realize, dear God, we ask you for permission to end this prayerful moment, and so be it. Okay. So we want to thank Leo, and we want to say for those, we want to thank you, Leo. Thank you very much for coming here. Come back more often. And for those who can stay a little bit longer, just so if you want to take a glance of the list of donations we need for the upcoming service for the homeless, just check it out if you can help us. Thank you very much. We wish you a wonderful new year together in the good. Thank you, friends.